Hello! Today I'm going to take a look at these Rembrandt paints that I got on Supercell at that market. They cost me around $2.30 each or $40 for 17 of them. If I'd have bought these retail it would have costed somewhere between $230 to $260 so I had a real savings there. Let's check out the colors I got. It's a totally random assortment. I don't even know what's in here. I can't remember and I will see if I can come up with a nice palette out of them. Let's get into it. So I have them sitting in this little acrylic box which is actually a Ferrero Rocher chocolate box and these little containers that they come in are so handy I always keep them. Not that we get these very often but we happen to have some for Christmas. So I'll just read out the colours that I have here and then I will try to put them in some sort of order. Some of these are really unusual colours and colour combinations. For example this one is chameleon blue slash green slash gold. I have no idea what that means. Does it mean that all three colors are going to come out. I'm really intrigued by that. I think there's another chameleon one here. Yes, there is. This one is chameleon violet, blue, and green. Ooh, I'm so excited. I love specialty paints. <laughs> I bought one color. That's because there are no yellows in this set, so I did pick up one yellow. This one is Azo Yellow Light, and I just took a punt that this might be a nice yellow to put into the set. Azo Yellows are usually very good. So this is the only one that I have bought separately. Then we have Olive Green, Titanium Buff, French Ultramarine, Permanent Red Violet, Cobalt Violet Bright, Quinacridone Red Violet, Chromium Oxide Green, Emerald Green, Spark Pink. Does this one have shiny stuff in it? I don't know. <laughs> I also have a second tube of this. I did not realize that there were doubles. So I have 17 tubes, but technically 16 colors, although now I have 17 colors because of the yellow. But we have a second spark pink. Transparent oxide red. Spark blue, another sparkly one. Permanent madder lake. Quinacridone purple bluish. And the last one is spark violet. So I have three sparkly ones, two chameleon ones, and a bunch of standard colors. I have a folding palette from Daiso that I haven't opened yet. It's been sitting in my stash just waiting to be used. And I think I'm going to put all of these paints into here. Because I don't know what order these colors should be in, I have not swatched any of them. I think I'm just going to take a total guess and put them in here, grouping them into colors. And then we can swatch them together because I was going to check the colors beforehand to put them in order, but I really just want to swatch these out with you and we can really be surprised together. But for now, let's get this Daiso pen open. So this thing cost a couple of dollars and I've used one before. It's pretty good. I used some of my water soluble oil paints and the other one that I had, but that definitely cannot be used now for watercolors. So I had this pristine one. Look at it. Lovely and shiny. All of that paint is going to beat up like crazy on here, but it doesn't really matter. I'll just blob a bit into the little wells and we can see what colors I've ended up with. So I have 12 standard colors. I'm hoping I've put these into a nice order that's not going to drive me crazy, but we will learn as we go. And then I have five unusual colors. Squeezing these paints out, they all had a nice consistency, although there were a couple which had slightly separated from the binder, but they weren't too thick and they weren't too runny. Really a nice consistency to pour them without making a gigantic mess. I forgot to mention earlier that Rembrandt paints are by the Dutch company Royal Talons and this is the professional line of watercolour paints that they have. Earlier this month I did a couple of videos on the Van Gogh paints which are also by Royal Talons and those are the mid-range ones. So these Rembrandt ones are a step above and are their most professional paints. They all mostly have single pigment numbers and I will mention those in a moment but I will just finish squeezing these out. I discovered right now that the Spark paints are all in a translucent liquid and they have a glitter inside them. This will become apparent when I swatch them out a bit later, but it's very hard to tell them apart, that's for sure. I couldn't remember which was which. And then I put the two chameleon paints in side by side, and they're also in a clear liquid with a very glittery texture. So yes, we will come back to them, but going into the swatches themselves, First up is Titanium Buff, which is one of two paints I ended up with that has multiple pigments. 
PW6 and PBR7 for that one. It's a very pale colour, slightly brownish cream. And then I've got the Azo Yellow Light, which is the one that I bought separately so that I would have a yellow. Incredibly bright. This one is PY154. And where Titanium Buff was semi-transparent, the Azo Yellow Light is fully transparent. Actually, almost all of these colours were transparent in the end, which I quite like. So, speaking of that, this next one is Transparent Red Oxide, PR101. A fairly standard pigment. It's a natural iron oxide and gives that burnt sienna kind of look. So that's a useful colour. I tried to add in a little more mass tone. Some of the paints here were quite delicate with their tinting strength. But the permanent Meta Lake is a pretty deep red and quite vibrant. This is made up of PR187 and is a transparent colour also. I like that one, it's quite nice, although it does dry a bit browner than what you're seeing here. The next one we have is Quinacridone Red Violet and that is PR202. This is quite a handy colour to have in a palette and I found I ended up using this one quite a lot as we will see later when I do a painting. It's a really useful colour actually, I like it for mixing. And it definitely could be used as a primary magenta colour. So onwards to the next one which is Permanent Red Violet. We just had Quinacridone Red Violet so <laughs> these two were quite different from each other. The Permanent Red Violet is much darker and the pigment is PV19. So it's quite a common pigment that I've seen used in any number of other brands, but it seems darker than what I remember. I don't know. <laughs> anyway, moving on to the next one, which is Cobalt Violet Bright. Now, I always find that cobalts are a bit of a pain. They don't seem to re-wet easily. They just don't react well with the binder. As you can see, it's quite gloopy and really difficult to spread on the page. And also, it dries like a rock. It's not actually pure cobalt. It is a hue, I think. Pigment PV14. I really like this quinacridone purple bluish. This is a handy colour to have and it's PV55. I'm not too sure if I've come across this pigment number before but it's a good colour and I ended up using that one too. This is my only blue. It's French Ultramarine PB29. It's pretty standard what I'm used to with a French Ultramarine. Slightly lower tinting strength than a few other brands that I've seen though. And the next one we have here is Emerald Green, which is PG36. It says it's transparent, but it feels just a little bit opaque to me or something. Like it has a bit of white mixed into it. I thought this was a phthalo green, but yeah, it just doesn't seem like a regular phthalo green that I'm used to seeing. It's very close in colour though. Anyway, I'll move on to Chromium Oxide Green, PG17. This is the other one in the set which is semi-transparent. Actually, Cobalt Violet Bright is also considered semi-transparent. Everything else is transparent in this. And the last one I have is Olive Green. This is three pigments, PG7, PY150 and PV19. An interesting mix and one of the most useful colours in this set that I found. I really liked it. And on to these sparkle ones. It's very difficult to see them on the white paper. The sparkle blue, violet and pink, they almost look identical because they are all in this fairly transparent binder. So I can assure you the colours are there but you have to flip the paper a bit in order to see them. It's the same with the chameleon colours that we have here. These were a lot more glittery though. You could see actual large pieces of glitter in it. They're so weird, but I'll show you them in just a moment on black paper, but here you can see them kind of sparkling in the light. Anyway, look at them on the black. It's so completely different. There's the spark blue. You can see how blue it is. I was just blown away by the difference that these made when they were on black paper. Here's the violet, which is also pretty, although I think that blue is just absolutely stunning. And I really love the pink. So I'm glad I ended up with two tubes of the pink one because that is the one I like the most out of everything. And I might end up even giving one of those tubes away because I don't know that I'm going to end up using it all. And here are the two chameleon colours. These are a little more difficult to see on the paper here, but I will show them in more depth. I'm not seeing three colours in each one though. I really only see one colour. What do you think about them? 
Well, it's definitely made an interesting palette of colours, and it's quite usable as well. I'm very glad I added in that yellow because that just really rounds it out, but otherwise you've got your primaries and some greens, lots of pinks and purples. So it's not a usual sort of colour palette, but it's definitely a very workable one. I think I managed to put them in a pretty good order as well of colours. These sparks and chameleon ones are very odd indeed. Let me just see if I can get them to shine. They're really pretty. I like them. But they're also definitely boutique colours and like a glitter on the top. So you'd add it either to black paper or over the top of your paintings. But look how different they are on the black paper. You can see those colours. They're absolutely gorgeous. These are the sparks, the blue, the violet and the pink. Those are so beautiful. And the chameleons, which look exactly the same to me as the sparks, I think they're supposed to be in different colours, but all I can see is green on that one and blue there. It's hard to tell. They're so lovely. They're not something I would have bought at any other time. To get them for a cheap price, I'm quite happy to have these in a collection. I don't know that I would keep them in the same palette as the regular colours, so I could put this in a 12 palette as a set of 12, or maybe eventually I'll expand because I am liking the colours so far. I haven't yet painted with them so I've got to do that. I do need to take a look at this colour palette and get some inspiration from it. So I actually did swatch these out in my sketchbook but I made such a mess of them. You could see the pen wasn't fully dried and so the buff titanium just smeared it out and then when I started painting in the other colours they didn't really run much on the water but they ran into each other and I just made a gigantic mess. So I've sped this up so you can see all of the pigment numbers on there and the little squares which indicate whether they're transparent or not. If it's an empty square it's transparent and if it's got a little line through it then it is semi-transparent but yeah <laughs> it was a total disaster I almost didn't include this footage but I figured you might as well see it I made a mess of those oh dear I've got bits running everywhere but I've painted over them a couple of times just to try and tidy them up and they actually do benefit from layering as they're quite transparent and pale when it's one layer so they look a lot brighter now and you can see there's granulation in the French ultramarine and the cobalt violet but not really much anywhere else and then we have the sparkly colors over here so I'm going to do a painting on this page I've already drawn out my picture and a few days ago Nick and I went to uh, Lotus Water Gardens and they have all these amazing lotuses on display at the moment here's a few photos I took I'm going to choose this photograph for my painting today. Let's get into it and try out these colours and see how they work. I started by painting a fairly light layer of all of my colours onto the paper so then I can just see what I want to put where and I chose the quinacridone red violet for the petals of the lotus. It's not quite the right pink, it's not as bright a pink as the actual flower itself but it's close enough and you can get the idea of what 
the flower is going to look like. But I did notice with these paints that once I'd let them dry in the palette, they are quite difficult to re-wet. This one's not so bad, but a couple of them just set like a rock. The Cobalt Violet Bright and the Chromium Oxide Green. But all of them were quite a challenge to re-wet and even the colours like French Ultramarine were a bit of a struggle. When I've used other brands they just re-wet a lot more easily than these ones. The Rembrandt paints feel very traditional to me like watercolours that are very old-fashioned and don't quite re-wet as easily as some of the more modern ones which I think is to do with the binder and other additives that they put in. Anything that has honey as a humectant in it will re-wet like a dream. But having said that, if you live in a really humid environment where honey-based paints are an absolute nightmare, I imagine that the Rembrandt paints would be quite useful and they probably wouldn't dry as hard as they do in Melbourne, which is usually a pretty dry climate. So I'm going in with the background just trying to add in some different colours for the leaves. I used quite a lot of the transparent red oxide mixed in with olive green for this because the chromium oxide green just was not re-wetting for me and I gave up on that one. The emerald green is okay, it's a bit too bright so I just mixed it in with some of the other colours just to tone it down a bit. My biggest issue I think was getting shadows. None of the colours I have are particularly dark. I was really wishing I had something dark like a Payne's Grey, a neutral tint or even an indigo. So I did my best to mix up paints to get a darker colour but it just wasn't particularly successful. I mentioned earlier that these paints are much better when they're layered which is why you'll see me go in with another layer over the top of this lot. I quite like that dark bluish purple I made and I left that there because you could see the granulation coming through from the ultramarine. And then I went back in with the lotus and did a much darker layer of that quinacridone red violet. And it turned out okay but I just wasn't feeling these paints. I don't know what it is about them, they just don't really fill me with joy compared to some other brands I've used. They're definitely professional, there's no issues with anything like chalkiness or any of that stuff that you get with lower grade paints. But out of all of the tube paints that I've tried, and it's a lot, these ones just didn't really do it for me. And I was a little lacking in motivation when it came to this painting just because I wasn't enjoying the paints as much as I have enjoyed some other brands lately. I even enjoyed the Van Gogh series more than the Rembrandt ones. They just seemed a lot more fun for some reason. These ones just seem a little bit stuffy. <laughs> it's very hard to know how to describe them but I just felt like it ended up being a bit flat. So in the end I did use some of those glittery paints, the sparks and the chameleons to go over my flower and make it a lot shinier and you'll see that at the end. That's it, I'm calling it done. One messy palette later. So as you can see, there's quite a lot of sparkle on there. <laughs> when in doubt, throw glitter on it. I personally liked these the best out of all of them. I quite liked the permanent red violet. That's the one I used for the flower. And also this quinacridone purple blue is definitely the darkest paint in the set that I have here. The as a yellow was a good addition, I'm glad I bought that one, but otherwise I'm not super enthused by these paints. There is nothing wrong with them, it's just that in the words of Jim Carrey and Liar Liar, 
I've had better. And honestly, I had more fun with the Van Gogh pocket sets, which are the grade that's down from the Rembrandt ones. And I ended up with much better paintings from those. As you can see here, at least I think they're better. But I just couldn't get it with this lot of paints. And I have done this over days. I painted these and then I've done this on a different day and then the painting on another day. Yeah, I'm just not feeling it. It happens. It could also be because it's really hot and I'm going through one of those down phases at the moment. But I will give these another chance over time. But yeah, I just don't think they're going to ever be my favorite paints. I'm glad I spent $40 on them and not 200 and something dollars. <laughs> That's for sure. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope it was helpful just to see what these paints are like. And do let me know in the comments if you have used the Rembrandt paints and what do you think of them? Do you love them? Do you hate them? Or are you like me and just feel kind of ambivalent towards them? Thank you so much for watching my video. I hope you enjoyed it and don't forget to give it a thumbs up if you did because it really helps me out. You can click that subscribe button if you haven't already done so and I will see you all again in my next video. I'll swatch you later. Bye!